the entrance and upon. Give me justice, O God, and plead my cause against the nation that is faithless. From the deceitful and cunning, rescue me, for you, O God, are my strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with his spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsible psalm, With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the, With the Lord, Lord there, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice and supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, O Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord my soul, trust in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With the, the Lord, Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plentiful redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With, with the, the Lord, Lord there is mercy, mercy and fullness of redemption. redemption. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brother, brethren, brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you, whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through his Spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Christ. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with his spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. And we shall use the shorter form. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one that you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister, and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For those of you watching this Mass, normally what we would do on the last weekend of the month is we would have a special prayer at the end of the Mass asking for the intercession of St. Peregrine. St. Peregrine 
if you do not know, is the patron saint of those who have cancer. So we pray that last Mass of the month for those stricken with this disease and for all those uh, family members who have or who still deal with people, loved ones who are stricken with cancer. And at the end, besides the anointing of the sick, we give a special blessing, a blessing with the relic, a relic of Saint Peregrine. So what I would like to do for all of us today is offer that blessing to you with this, a relic of Saint Peregrine, the patron saint of cancer, whom we can also ask to bless us at this time as we deal with another illness. And through the intercession of Saint Peregrine, May God inspire doctors and nurses to give those stricken with cancer and other diseases the best care possible. May he provide strength and grace to the caretakers of those who are stricken. And may he provide perseverance to do his will for those who have cancer or any other illness. And may Almighty God bless you. And I will give the final blessing with the relic in Latin. Dominus vobiscum et cum spiritu tuo benedicat vos omnipotens Deus pater et filius et spiritui sanctus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I was chuckling the other day, since so many of us priests have become televangelists, a, a uh, friend of mine was telling me, oh, I'm Father Sosha, I saw Father X saying Mass. Oh, he did such a good job. And his Mass was only 15 minutes long. And I had to chuckle. My homilies go 15 minutes long at 4.30 in the morning. I figure, hey, nobody's up. I can talk as long as I want. Even my father tells me I've gotten long-winded. But hopefully it won't be as bad today. Our responsorial psalm is Psalm 130. In the Latin, it was called De Profundis. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears be attentive to the sound of my weeping. Saint Augustine, the Bishop of Hippo, the great doctor of the church, was providing his people with an excellent homily on Psalm 130 when he asked a very important question. I was struck by his question. In fact, I wrote it down and I want to read it to, to you. This is what he asked his people. When we pray, do we speak from the height of our pride and will or out of the depths of a humble and contrite heart? What St. Augustine did in that one question is better than I could do, no matter how long I stood up here, is he summarized two very important points in our spiritual growth and development. Let me explain. During times of crisis, and I'm not necessarily referring to this time dealing with this virus. Look, let's be honest. We all go through moments of crisis throughout our lives where we feel estranged from God, abandoned, as we spoke about when we reflected upon uh, the words of Jesus from the cross, his word, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We've all had those moments. It doesn't necessarily just refer to this time. But in those moments, we have an opportunity 
a great opportunity to grow and develop in our spiritual life. Now, this time that we are dealing with now can truly become a time of great blessing. It can be one of the great gifts that we receive throughout our earthly life. I know for many, including myself, we've been able to use this time to uh, maybe organize our house, clean, get projects done that we had been putting off. I'll get to that when I have time. Now I have time. We may be reconnecting with our family, uh, writing letters or email or text, whatever they do now. Uh, let me, small aside, just as a point of reference, uh, write a letter, handwrite a letter. I can promise you a handwritten letter means more to someone than a text or an email. That's just an old put in the back of your head because that means you took the time to sit down to write. And we've got time right now. So write, write a letter. But we have all these times when we can sit down and we can look. One of the things that people have done, I, I've done this, is to go through as I'm cleaning and say, okay, do I need this or not? If I don't need it, can I donate it? Maybe to Goodwill, the Salvation of Army, Catholic Charities? Or is it something that just needs to be uh, thrown into the circular uh, waste bin? But at that moment, I have to make a choice. I have to detach myself from that object. That's the first step in spiritual growth and maturity, detachment. To be able to realize what things are important and what things are not. Now, I can say this as the vicar for clergy. One of my duties is uh, taking care of our priest, our, especially our older priest. And I've had the opportunity to be uh, there after the fact, after the passing, after the funeral, after everything's situated, and to go through things. And I'm looking through these different things and I see like a, a figurine. I remember one priest used to collect frogs. And there was a figurine of a frog. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, that figurine, it holds no meaning for me. I could easily give it away so that someone could buy it at a yard sale, whatever. But for that priest, that meant something to him. That was a memory of some event or some person, something special that caused him to hold on to that. During that time of detachment, I have to say, do I need the object or not? I can still have the memory, but do I need the object? So we start to detach ourselves thinking what material objects do we need, what do we not need. And when we move away from material objects, it gives us an opportunity to move into another realm of spiritual growth and development. And that is solitude. Being quiet, reflecting, thinking, listening. Most would think that to be a person of solitude is being lonely. In fact, when I was in the seminary, uh, they used to talk to us about, gentlemen, one of the biggest things you're going to struggle with in your priesthood is loneliness. Trust me, loneliness is not an issue. A lot of times you're sitting there going, oh, I can't wait to be alone because you have so many different things coming at you. But solitude is not loneliness. Solitude 
is contemplative reflection. Asking God's Holy Spirit to guide you to say, what is important? One of the things that we should daily reflect upon is our inevitable end. What's going to happen to us? One day we're all going to pass away. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but it's a reality. One day we will all pass away. What is going to happen at that time when I stand in front of the Almighty? And if I can reflect upon that just for a few moments in the day and let that guide my actions, then I can say in my time of solitude, Lord, what actions, what behaviors, what thoughts, what words, what's leading me closer to you? And what is like that millstone wrapped around my neck, dragging me down further and further into bitterness, grief, or despair? What is important? What is going to lead me to you? What isn't? Now, I am fully aware that all of us have been uh, blindsided, to say the least, by what has transpired, not only in the United States, but all over the world. How we are struggling with quarantines, maybe curfews. For some with school out, now they have children that they have to take care of or they're working from home and their responsibilities have increased fourfold. For others, this time of quiet, of not being able to get out as much, it may be a, becoming a great temptation to lose themselves into television computers, the internet, social media, video games. For others, this time as they, they may be sitting in front of the news, and you know, now we have these 24 hour news programs and their anxiety might be growing by the moment because each new case is a breaking story. If you ever notice, they always show us this many people have passed away. This many people are affected. And it gets awfully scary. So I can understand some. Their anxiety, oh no, can I touch this? Can I not do this? I saw a video, I don't know if you saw it, of a person who stopped at a, 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 a fast food place to get a cup of coffee. And they put it on the thing for him to get. And... The Joker takes out a Lysol can, starts spraying the coffee, flips it around, sprays it again, flips it around, sprays it like, he does it like three or four times. And then takes the lid off, throws it inside and drives off with the coffee. Okay, whatever. That's maybe a little bit of paranoia, but look at where we're being driven toward. Let us stop. Stop. Take a moment. Just allow God's Holy Spirit to guide you. Reflect what is most important. What example am I going to leave to those I love? During this time, am I going to be a beacon of hope? A man or woman of prayer, guiding them into a deeper relationship with God as I myself am trying to develop one? Or am I only going to exacerbate the situation? Am I going to not focus on what's really important? You and I have a choice, and I'll conclude as Augustine did with a question. We have a choice. Either we can use this time as it is, a gift, to stop, to detach ourselves, to take time in solitude, to examine what is most important, 
what is going to lead us into that deeper relationship with God and what isn't. Or we can waste this moment. And what happens then? Well, eventually when it ends, the only thing we're able to do is walk around with a t-shirt that says, I survived the great toilet paper shortage of 2020. Seems like we have a choice. May God bless us as we try to grow spiritually during this time. May Almighty God bless all of you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now we pray our profession of faith, I pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Coming together as one family in this faith, let us offer to God our prayers and our needs. We pray for our Holy Father, for our Archbishop, for all priests, religious brothers, sisters, permanent deacons, and seminarians at this time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sick or suffering in any way, especially those in hospitals, nursing homes, the homebound, and the homeless, those stricken with the disease of cancer and other diseases. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for you. You who are watching this Mass on video, for your needs and the needs of your family and those you love and hold so dear, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those present in our chapel today, for their needs, the needs of their families and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer offering all our prayers to the Father. Let us conclude with a prayer of praise, honoring the Blessed Trinity. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread that we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift him up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man he wept for Lazarus his friend. And as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the King, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of oh God, God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the blessed sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee, and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. 
Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.